You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. For the community, by the community. For the community, by the community. Flowing at the farmers market. On tonight's show, I am going to share with you some ideas for how to preserve the summer's produce for enjoyment throughout the winter. I'm Sarah Connor, and you're watching Life in Style with Sarah. On tonight's episode, part three of my Connecticut Fed journey into eating local, I am going to share with you some of the things that I've learned about saving my favorite summer produce. So I am not an expert at all on this, I will admit, but I'm really good at researching and trying stuff. And so what I'm gonna share with you tonight is some of the things that I've learned on how to save some of my favorite produce from the summer. So I picked a few things that are my favorite. Corn, you can't beat sweet corn from Connecticut, and it's such a short season that I'm looking forward to preserving it and enjoying it in the winter. Tomatoes, um, peaches, blueberries, and um, yeah, and that's for tonight, that's what I'm gonna, going to try and cover. Um, so I'm going to start with corn. So what I've learned is um, that when you're working with vegetables, it's really important to blanch them. And what blanching means is to take the vegetable and to cook it in really boiling hot water for a certain amount of time. And what that does is it kills the enzymes in the vegetables so that when you put it in the freezer, um, it doesn't, the rotting process doesn't start while it's in the freezer and then it keeps it safe for your consumption. And for vegetables it's particularly important because, um, you know, some of those enzymes do cause bacteria that can make you sick if you don't do it right. So um, my recommendation would be, you know, follow some of my tips but also um, go to my website and you can find uh, links to the resources that I use that tells you the bl exact blanching times that you need. Um, so to start with the summer corn, I took the corn and I have obviously you, you peel it and then what you need to do is you need to wash it. So I'm going to take it over to the sink and make sure it's nice and clean. So while I'm washing it, I'm making sure that I have all the husks off and there's no dirt or, God forbid, worms, which is really yucky. I would take the worms, I would, if there are any worm spots, I would cut that off before you cook it. So I now have my freshly washed and shucked corn. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the boiling pot of water. And it's important that um, you time the amount of time that your corn is in the pot because that is that critical blanching time that cooks it enough so that the enzymes are killed um, but also is not so much that you ruin the flavor of your corn. So I am going to wait. You start the blanching timer when the um, water starts boiling again. So it is now boiling now. I'm going to set the timer for eight minutes. And while the corn is blanching, I am going to work on some tomatoes. Tomatoes are, there's a couple ways to do tomatoes. And tomatoes is actually a vegetable where you don't need to cook it in the blanching process. You just basically put it in, there are two, things, two ways you can do it. You can take your tomato, um, just as is. So let's say you have this tomato and you want to um, freeze it. You can't use it right away but you don't want it to spoil. So you put it in a freezer bag or a container. Um, you can use a vacuum sealer which you can get at lots of stores. Any of the um, sort of big box stores do sell them. I decided not to invest in one at this point um, so I'm using freezer bags and the importance of freezer bags is that, that they are thicker and they um, prevent 
freezer burn more than just like a regular Ziploc bag might. So you can just take a tomato, put it in a bag, get as much of the air out as possible, and then um, put it in the freezer. And then when you take it out of the freezer um, and you're ready to use it, what you do is you take the tomato out of the bag and you run it under lukewarm water and then you can just kind of rub the peel off and it just peels right off. It's really, really simple and then you can chop it up and, and use it um, in you know, sauce or whatever the recipe is that you're going to use it in. So that's one way to do tomatoes. Another way to do tomatoes is to um, take your tomato and get the skin off before you um, to get the skin off before you freeze it and then you can chop it and you can freeze it as diced tomatoes. So that is what I am going to do um, right now while I'm waiting for the corn to cook. So I'm putting the tomato in the pot of water and you want to put it in there for about 30 30 seconds or so and you put it in ice water. Okay, so you put it in ice water. Now I'm going to set I'm going to set this tomato aside because my corn is almost ready to go into the ice bucket. And when I when it's done blanching and I put it in the ice, then I have to let it cool again. Once you've blanched it, you have to cool it in ice water for the same amount of time as you blanched it for. So for the corn, I'm cooking it for eight minutes, and then I'm going to take the corn cobs out, immediately put them into a, um, a bowl of ice water, and I'm going to cool them for eight minutes as well. So here goes the timer. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Now it's time to put the corn in the ice water. And you want a bowl that's big enough that your corn will all fit in there. It's really important to stop that cooking process. Okay, so. Now I'm going to let the corn cool for another eight minutes. And while the corn is cooling, I'm going to work on my tomato. So here I've got my tomato and um, it's very, very easy to peel now. So I dipped it in the hot boiling water and then I, for about 30 seconds, and then I put it in the ice water. So it's important when you're doing this, you have lots of ice on hand, lots of cold water on hand, and you go ahead and you peel your tomato. So this is so easy to do, and I have to tell you, I am so excited to be able to preserve all of the abundance of tomatoes that comes in, um, you know, at the end of the summer and you don't really have a chance to use it. Now, I'm freezing the tomatoes and I know, you know, when I looked into preserving, um, there was definitely, um, you know, the other way to preserve was to can. Um, and for canning, it just seemed more complicated and there were a lot more rules on making sure you do it properly so that you don't, um, have problems with bad bacteria and I just decided I'm a newbie at this so I am going to go simple and do the freezing process. So cutting my tomatoes and I'm dicing them. Dicing, dicing, dicing. Okay, peel came off easily. And now I'm going to put my tomatoes into a freezer bag. So, okay. So now I have my tomatoes in the freezer bag. And now this is kind of a funny tip that I learned to get the air out. So I'm not using a um, vacuum sealer. I just I just wasn't ready to make that investment. I just wanted to see, you know, how much I actually um, did preserve and if it was worth it. So I figured, you know, do the Ziploc, 
but you really want to get as much air out as possible because that's what causes the freezer burn. So, what you do is you get as much air out as you can, and this bag is actually working pretty well. These tomatoes are working pretty well. You take a straw and you just leave a tiny hole in the zipper part and then you suck the extra air out and I swear it works and it's kind of a hilarious kitchen trick but so you suck it out and then you quickly shut the bag and then you've got your tomatoes. Now the other important thing to do is to label your bags before you put them in the freezer so that you know how old they are you know when you packed them because there definitely is a shelf life for every different vegetable in the freezer um, and that's something else that um, you know I will put some links on my website that have all sorts of charts on how long things will last in the freezer. So instead of having a vacuum sealer, I used my handy dandy straw, a little bit less expensive. It worked pretty well. Um, if you do use a vacuum sealer, everything that I've read has said if you're doing something that has liquid, like tomatoes have liquid, um, if you're doing peaches, which I'll do later, um, you need to freeze the bag, freeze the contents before you seal the bag. Otherwise, the vacuum sealer will suck the liquid into the motor of the vacuum sealer. And that is really bad. So you've spent all that money on a vacuum sealer and sucked liquid into the motor. So um, in any case, so straw works great. So my tomatoes are done. That's it. So simple. And then you can just take them out of the freezer, let them thaw, and um, cook them into a delicious sauce or, you know, chili, whatever it is that you want to do with them. So I'm going to go put these in the freezer. Okay, once your corn has cooled, then um, I'm going to take it over to the sink and I'm going to drain it in uh, my colander. So one of the things I've learned is um, to make sure the corn is nice and dry um, because if it's not then little crystals will form on it and I'm pretty sure that's going to lead to some early freezer burn. So there are a couple ways to freeze the corn. The simplest but it takes up lots of space in your freezer is to just wrap the cob of corn um, in saran wrap. And then you can have corn on the cob in the middle of the winter. Wouldn't that be awesome? So I'm just gonna take a couple ears of corn and dry them. They are in my clean towel. So all you do is you just take your plastic wrap and you can wrestle your plastic wrap off of the roll. Okay, so take your plastic wrap and you wrap your corn in it. So this is so, so easy and I really am having visions of fresh corn on the cob in the winter and I think that's just like such a special treat. And not only fresh, but local. And you definitely can't grow corn in Connecticut in the middle of winter. So, there we go. See? Easy as pies. The second way to preserve the corn is to cut the kernels off of the corn of cob. Now, I got sucked into buying a gadget. And this is actually a um, gadget that's specifically made to take kernels off of the corn of cob. So you start at the top a little bit below where the point is because you know those top kernels aren't so great and then you scrape the kernels into the thing. Now I have to say I have always cut my kernels off of my corn with a knife and I honestly think it's easier. So this gadget is kind of cool. It looks neat. I like the idea. You can measure the corn in the little carrier, but if I were to give my review, I would say go with the knife. So I'm going to put that to the side and I'm going to do my other ones with the knife. So with the knife, you just hold it, cut your kernels off.
Now, what I'm going to do is, um, there's something called tray packing. And what that is, is you freeze whatever your item is on a tray, and then you pack it so that the kernels don't freeze all together in a big blob. So I'm going to tray pack these. I'm going to take the kernels. I'm going to separate the kernels that are all in a big bunch. And then I'm going to just spread them out so they're on kind of an individual single layer. All right, so spread out on a single layer. And then you put it in the freezer until they are frozen. Put them in a bag, seal the bag, label it, and you have fresh corn anytime you want. I just served some to my daughter for lunch today, and it was delicious. Let's move on to fruit. So blueberries are another one of my absolute favorite summertime fruits. Um, and they pretty much stay in season until, you know, I think in September. Um, so you should still be able to get some blueberries um, in the supermarket or at, at your farm stand. Or you can just tuck this away for next year if you don't have a chance to do it now. Um, blueberry is so easy. This is another tray pack item. So you put it on to um, a cookie sheet. You don't wash them before you put them in the, in the freezer to freeze them. You just put them on um, a cookie sheet, put them in the freezer, and when they're done freezing, you put them into a Ziploc bag, label them, and put them in the, free in the freezer. So easy. And you can just pull them out. Um, and have local fresh blueberries anytime in the winter. So I'm going to go put these into the freezer and I'll be back to share with you how to preserve peaches. Okay, so peaches are a little bit more complicated than blueberries. Um, peaches, you have to take the peel off and you need to um, make sure that it doesn't turn brown when you put it in the freezer. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take the peel off, and I learned, this is a very cool trick too. Um, in the past, when I've done peaches um, for like a cobbler, I peel the peaches and I don't, I just, you know, peel them like an apple. But it turns out if you put peaches in boiling water like you do with tomatoes, the peel just comes right off and you don't lose any of that delicious um, uh, tender flesh. So first you wash the peaches, so I'm going to take these over to the sink and give them a good wash. So just want to make sure there's no dirt or anything on the peaches and drain them. And then just like we did, just like we did with the corn, um, I'm sorry, with the tomatoes, we're going to just very quickly boil them and then put them into um, ice water. So for peaches, the rule of thumb is about 20 seconds, and then you just put them into ice water. So I am going to do that. I'm going to stir them around for about 20 seconds. Okay, so once you have the peaches um, boiled, they're really easy to peel. So you just, just like the tomato, the skin just comes right off. It just peels right off. It's amazing. And I wish I had known this years ago because I have a peach and blueberry cobbler recipe that I adore and it is such a pain to peel the peaches. So this makes it so much easier. Now you can freeze peaches um, without peeling them, but from what I've read, um, it gets slimy. The skin gets slimy, and I don't think anyone likes slimy skin. I know my girls wouldn't. One of the guidelines is that you want to pick, for freezing things like peaches and any fruit really, is you want to pick it um, so that it's at a ripeness stage where you would go ahead and eat it. Um, so this is my last peach. All the rest I've done. Um, and the other thing is, if there are any like brown spots or bruises, you want to take those off because um, you don't want you don't want to freeze bruised fruit. So, last peach done. Now, what I'm going to do? I'm going to set aside the peels. Um, now, what you need to do is. Um, 
you want to keep the peaches from turning brown. So, um, what you, you can do a mixture, you can do like a sweet syrup where you can boil um, water with different types of sugars um, and make a syrup. But uh, you can also just use fresh 100% fruit juice, which is a little bit healthier because it's not processed sugar. So that's what I've chosen to do. I'm using white grape juice. And then um, you can either use lemon to keep them from turning brown, or you can use a product called Fruit Fresh, which um, is what I opted for. It's all natural. It's basically citric acid, which is you know what's in lemons that keeps it from turning brown. Um, and it's a teaspoon per cup. And I got this, I unfortunately had to go to a very, one of those big box stores to find this. Um, a lot of grocery stores have preserving um, equipment like the cans and things, but I couldn't find this except for at a big box uh, store. So once you've mixed the uh, juice that's going to go in with the peaches, you, I decided to use these um, containers. You could use Ziploc bags, which I thought might be a little um, messy. So I found these in the preserving section um, at the grocery store and they are BPA free so they're you know good and they're freezer safe and reusable. So I decided to for this option. So you take your fruit and you fill it up. There's a fill line and you need to leave what's called head space so that when the water, the liquid expands when it freezes you don't blow the top off of your container. So you just fill it up with your peaches okay and that's pretty much to the fill line and then I'm going to pour the liquid on it up into the fill line and then what you want to do is you just want to sort of put your spoon down in there just to get any bubbles or anything out of there Okay, and then you put the lid on, label it, put it in the freezer. Um, now what I want to do before I end the show is I want to share with you one of my most favorite summer recipes. And now that I have preserved my peaches and my blueberries, I'll be able to make this in the winter as well. It's a blueberry peach cobbler. And what you want to do is you want to um, take a, a cup of sifted flour, and mix it with a half a cup of sugar and I'm sorry three quarters of a cup of sugar so half a cup plus a quarter makes three quarters okay you want to mix that with um, a half a teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of baking powder I'm cheating I'm looking at my recipe to make sure I don't do it wrong one teaspoon of baking powder and you want to mix this up, stir it up. I'm going to use a fork. You mix this up and then what you want to do is take an egg. Now this egg is actually from a farm where I purchased a fresh chicken which is a whole other experience that I can't get into on air but if you go to my website uh, you will see me blog about that chicken. In fact, it's cooking in my oven right now. Um, I got a chicken to order. So you take the unbeaten egg and you crack it into this, what's going to be the topping, and you just mix it. Mix it, mix it, mix it, mix it until it's crumbled. Okay, the next step is to mix three cups of cut peaches with two cups of blueberries. Now these blueberries I did wash and I'm picking out any little stems. These are from Rose's Berry Farm. Yummy, yummy. So I'm taking out any squishy, icky ones. I'm mixing them up. Lost a few, jump and ship. Ah! Okay, mixing my blueberries and my peaches. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to sprinkle my topping, which was the egg and the sugar and the flour, on top. Okay, so that's kind of your crumble, your crisp part. And then you drizzle that 
with a quarter of a cup of melted butter, which I am melting in the oven. Okay, so then you take a quarter of a cup of melted butter and you drizzle it over the top of your topping. Yummy, yummy. This is not low fat, but oh, it's so, so good. Okay, and then I have here um, a mixture of a half a teaspoon of cinnamon and two teaspoons of sugar. And I am just going to sprinkle that right on top. So you have a little bit of a cinnamon sugary taste on top of your cobbler. I'm telling you, this is so good. And I'm going to credit my mother-in-law because this is her recipe. And I make this every year and I love it. And now that I know how to peel my peaches, um, it's so much easier to make. So um, I am going to put this in the oven and bake it. And when it comes out, you can bake it for about 35 to 40 minutes. Um, when it's nice and brown and bubbly and yummy. Um, and then you have a fresh peach and blueberry crisp or cobbler to enjoy. And it's made out of all um, local fruit and a local egg. And um, the butter is actually from Maine, so that's not so local. But this is my absolute favorite recipe. It will be on my website. Um, and I will um, be back with the finished product. Mm, I wish you could smell how delicious this smells. This is definitely one of my summertime staples. Um, I am going to put the recipe on my website, um, sarahconnor.net, under the recipes tab, and then you can enjoy it. And the great thing is now that I have frozen some of these fantastic peaches and blueberries, I can make this in the middle of the winter and still have a summer fresh blueberry peach cobbler. If you take a little bit of time at the, during the harvest season and freeze just about anything, you can enjoy summer freshness in the middle of winter. I'm Sarah Connor. You've been watching Life in Style with Sarah. Don't forget to tune in next month to a brand new episode. Thanks and good night.